now to direct, act, and write the screenplay. That is so much more than most people can say they've ever done. How is it? Was it overwhelming? What I mean, how do you feel about taking on all these three roles? Would you do it again? <laughs> I will do it again. And I mean, I think a man, there's a quote. I'll just give you this quote. It is in the Holy Quran. It says, uh, God places no burden upon a man which he cannot carry. And I feel like that's, that's my situation. I can do these things, you know. I can write. You know, I wrote many songs and many stories that people love, you know. I can uh, direct. I know how to control people and bring the best out of them. And I can perform. I've been on stage in front of thousands of kids jumping up and down doing what the RZA does. So these three things are in me naturally, and I'm not shy or scared to put them together to do what I have to do. Um, yes, it's overwhelming, though. It's not easy. I'm not going to say that this is just an easy, uh, smooth ride. But uh, after great ease comes, I mean, after great difficulty comes ease. Uh, I use this analogy when we was doing the film because I got into a fight with my producers, right? And it was right near the end of editing, and they had their ideas, and producers got power, and you got to listen to what they want to do. And I was just fighting with them, and I felt a little depressed. And I almost gave up. Like I was like, I'm not coming back to the editing room. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck what happens. I did my job and all this shit. And I remember um, talking to my wife about it. And she was like, no, Bobby, you got to continue all the way to the end. Then I went to Tarantino. I complained to him. I said, now they want me to put the music in it and score it. That's too much, man. It's too much for one man. He said, no, Bobby, you're going to score this film. Who else is going to do it? You got to carry it all the way to the end. That's what a director and a filmmaker does. And so I thought about it, right? And it's like a woman in labor. The pain of labor is the most excruciating pain that y'all gonna have. And it's right before birth that it gets even the worst intensity. But after it's over, you have a whole new life, a whole new generation, and a whole new chance of beauty. And that's how I felt. <laughs> Now about a little bit about the martial martial arts culture. Um, clearly, I mean, like Wu Tang, even the name, it all alludes to this martial arts culture. When was when did that interest really spark? Like going way back to the childhood. Can you tell me a little bit bit about just those initial moments? Yeah, you know, my first film I ever saw right was Tom Sawyer in a movie theater. It was like the first time I went to the movie theater. It was a Tom Sawyer Huckleberry Finn movie, and I liked it. <laughs> My second time to the movie theater, though, was, um, I think, Star Wars. And it was a double feature. It was Star Wars playing with the swarm. <laughs> and if you look at Wu-Tang, we got the killer bees. You know, we speak about the force and these kind of ideas. And my third time to the movies was Rocky. <laughs> and then my fourth time to the movies was a double feature called, it was a Bruce Lee film called Fury of the Dragon and Black Samurai with Jim Kelly. And that's when I became a buff, when the first time I saw Kung Fu fighting on the screen. And i never forget being taken, you know, asking, you know, selling newspapers. I'm like, I'm only nine years old now. And I'm selling newspapers, trying to uh, get money to go to the movie theaters. And I would sell out, save up two or three dollars, and we'd go to movie theaters on Saturdays. And it'd be triple feature Kung Fu movies. And I just loved them and loved them. And I just would always go. Even as a teenager, I would cut school and hang out in the movie theater. So at first it was the action, you know, seeing one guy beat up 20 guys. Or I thought Chinese people could really jump off of roofs and <laughs> jump up like that. I thought they could really do it. I was scared of them for a while. Um, but then at my teenage years, and I'll just say this to end the question. During my teenage years, I watched the movie 36 Chambers again. And for the first time, I heard the wisdom that they were trying to teach us in the movie. And to see that it was a bunch of college kids being oppressed by the government, and they wanted to make a change, and they sacrificed their lives and their family lives to make that change. And to see that uh, they had to go to a place to learn Buddhism and martial art to better themselves. These things really inspired me, and I started buying books. And I just took it more serious. So since the early, you know, adult, early childhood age to, through adolescence and teenage, Kung Fu and martial arts has been a big part of my life, and it still is.
And what do you hope to communicate with your films to your audience? Do you want to incorporate this this Buddhism that and just like the balance that you've been talking about? Or is it more just about the action and the entertainment? Oh, I think in my film, I'm striving to incorporate um, all the above. I want to incorporate uh, fun entertainment because a movie to me should be entertaining. You know, if you look at Star Wars, it takes place in a galaxy far, far away, okay? We're never going to get there, all right? But it gives you this imagination. But yet, within the middle of that, you see the struggle of a person and the struggle of a family, actually, you know? And within that, you see the magic of a lightsaber and all these things. So to me, that's what a film should be. So in my film, The Man with the Iron Fist, of course it's action-packed. But at the same time, I got a guy who could turn his body to brass. <laughs> that's magical. And a guy who could shoot blades all out, you know? Then at the same time, though, there's a scene which I fought for because uh, the producers was not really supportive of this particular thing. But the scene where he goes to the temple and he learns some wisdom. Because to me, a t person should walk out of a movie theater feeling all s points of stimulation. He should have a, got a good laugh, maybe a good cry, some stimulation of entertainment that could even feel sexual or feel aggressive, get rid of the aggression. But he should also walk out with a grain of wisdom. And so all my films, I would strive to have these things in it, sometimes one more than the other. Maybe on my next film, you'll get more philosophy and more warmth in that part and less action. Maybe I'll do a film that says all action that ends with a philosophical ending. But I want to always be able to stimulate these emotions and these ideas inside my audience. So thinking about your future films in Wu-Tang, but you in particular really changed the hip hop genre. Do you think that you can have that same effect on the film industry? I mean, what, what do you have to bring? Yeah, I think I have the potential to have that same effect on the film industry because it's coming from a different point of view, a different kind of train. First of all, I'm trained by Quentin Tarantino, and he changed the film industry. He's the master of Pulp Fiction, and since he brought Pulp Fiction to the screen, every year there's a dozen films that's imitating his style. Um, one thing I think I did do, and uh, I, I mean, I will say I learned a lot from the Asian directors, and you can see that in my film, but one thing that nobody ever did was to take the backdrop of, my, of the film that I made, which is a period piece, put the certain kind of characters in it, where you have a black character, a white character, an Asian character, all coming from different cultures, and then the soundscape or the soundtrack is hip hop. Now, if you look at Iron Fist, you'll see that was the first film that had a, took place in the 1800s, but yet the music, Kanye West was rapping in my film, Wiz Khalifa. And then since then, though, we've had Django, which had the big scene of hip-hop playing over the movie, and also The Great Gatsby. So I think I may have already brought some to the film industry, whereas they realized that music um, don't have to be in the same time period. Now, of course, my teacher did something similar with Inglorious Bastards when he put in David Bowie over that final scene of the theater burning. Um, but to have hip-hop itself on a, mo on a major motion picture playing with the A-list actors, I don't think that's been done until Iron Fist. And now, so I know you've said that you've been kind of mixing genres, but even to take it a little further in your music, you know, hip hop is all about sampling from different places and really just bringing in the soul and the orchestral pieces and everything. It's, it's kind of this journey through history that you said you've tried to explore in your, in your film. How do you think you're going to take that further? Are you going to explore other genres in the future? Yes, I do think I'll, I'll, I will aim to explore other genres, whether I'm writing it myself. I'm, I'm in the process of writing a film right now named One Spoon of Chocolate. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's going to be my next one that we would get the green light for, but I'm writing it. And I'm just really approaching filmmaking the way I approach music. Um, if I could best chrono put it in a chronological sense statement, if you think about in the music, I first made Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers, and then I made Takao. And then I made Only Built for Cuban Links, Liquid Sports, uh, Return to the 36th Chamber, Old Dirty Bastard, and Iron Man. 
in, in, in hip hop history, a lot of these albums are considered in the top 100 and the most influential ones, right? So if I could do the same thing in film, that'd be a great blessing. And that's my goal. Um, I want to continue to push the needle on what kind of things we could bring together to tell a story. Um, I will always go back to say Quentin Tarantino, you know, is the father of doing that. When you watch movies like Pulp Fiction and Glorious Bastards, you know, he took history and he changed it. He let Hitler get shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the audience loved it. So I'm, I want to definitely continue, you know, what my, I learned from him, but there's some things that I do that's of my own original flavor and originality. I'm going to bring that to my films to the best of my ability. Would you say that film is the end gain? It's what you've been working at, what all your decisions at this point have accumulated to, or is it just kind of another step in the journey that is being the RZA? <laughs> well, we never know what life holds for us, you know, but I do plan and prepare myself for the, the best way I can, you know. And I think that film has been something I've been preparing for for years. When I tell you that I sat there, excuse me, for six years studying under Quentin, that's six years of me being patient, waiting for the opportunity to show that I could do this. And I got to that point. I would say, as of now, honestly, that making film is the ultimate expression medium for all my talents. Because in film, I could write, I could make music, I could act, I could perform and I could produce and direct. It's the perfect medium of art. At 30 frames per second, ideas are flashing in front of our eyes, stimulating every emotion. And to me, this is the greatest medium to entertain. Thank you.